Hi, my name is Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a solopreneur, as a side hustler, or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Today we're talking about Tony Bennett and the lasting legacy that he's created for himself. Um, I just learned from ARP Magazine, shout out to John Capolito, I believe is his last name, who did an excellent article about the battle that Tony Bennett's having right now with Alzheimer's disease. Um, I have uh, close relatives that have passed away from Alzheimer's, so sympathy to him and his family. I imagine it's a pretty rough time for them, but it's a beautiful article. I'll be sure and include it in the notes and put a link in here. So excellent job. My background is journalism, so uh, I definitely would give him props uh, for doing that great piece. Anyway, what I found fascinating about it is the power of longevity, particularly for someone who Tony, who's like Tony Bennett, who's 94 years old, and he's had a, a business a career, I'd say, since he was like 18. So he's seven decades in the business, incredible. But there's some big lessons that we can learn from the work that he's done in the past. And hopefully as hopefully if he gets better, uh, some of the stuff that he can do in the future. The first thing that you can really learn from him is that if you're really into a particular idea or passion, then that's gonna be you, whether you're stripped away of everything or not. It reminds me a lot of um, Ella Fitzgerald. I remember seeing a PBS uh, documentary about her many, many years ago. And she used to wake up in the middle of the night, automatically start to get dressed and put on makeup and say, oh my God, I have to go to Paris. Oh my God, I have to go to Prague. This was after she was retired. I think she was in her 70s. This is many years ago before she passed away. And so she was retired. She wasn't singing anymore. But she was so built for the road and spent so many years um, working with... Um, Louis Armstrong and uh, I believe Duke Ellington and all these legends that that was part of her strength, that was part of her identity, even when she retired. The same thing is happening with Tony Bennett where there's a beautiful thing in, in, um, in John's piece in ARP where he talks about how Tony seems to be going in and out because he's interviewing him, seems to be going in and out. But then as soon as his wife puts on music, like one of his standards, then he's ready to get up and start singing. And suddenly all these words are coming to him and his voice is as powerful as, as ever. Remember, he's 94. So whatever you're passionate about, whatever your thing is, it needs to be you whether you get the bestseller or not, whether you get the money or not, whether you get the accolades or not. Over the past year, we've been sheltering in place as of this recording. Um, and if you are watching it live, of course, you know what I'm talking about. If you're watching in the future, this is what was happening in the, in the, in the 2020s, right? And so many of my speaking engagements got canceled or got pushed into the future. They're still getting pushed into the future because we don't know when we're gonna be physically be able to connect with each other, right? So part of how I make a living and part of my thing as a public speaker went away. Uh, I'm sheltering in place with my voice. We've been sheltering in place for several months, going on a year now. Um, they're downstairs right now, you could probably hear them. And so we've been remote schooling. So I'm not able to go and do my traditional job. Um, it's really difficult to get books out and it's even harder to connect with people and build new businesses. However, I just came out with a new book called Built From Now. It came out January 28th, 2021. Um, I talked to 18,000 plus of y'all through an Instagram live that I did with Costco. Shout out to Costco. Um, again, through Instagram uh, just recently. And last year, I ended up doing more keynotes than I've ever done in my life. What I'm saying is that there can be a pandemic. There can be um, sheltering in place. There can be all these things, but nothing can prevent me from connecting to you because that's part of who I am. That is my passion. That's who I'm serving. I'm serving you no matter what. So if, to, if I have to serve you over Telegram <laughs> and Carrier Pigeon, then you'll be getting a daily Carrier Pigeon message from Damon Brown every single day because that's part of my identity. You see it with Ella and you see it, um, you see it with Tony. I mean, and so even though his brain is literally deteriorating and they talk about a lot in the article, he's still Tony Bennett. You drop that first beat or that hi-hat and he's singing, there's one beautiful line in there where he sung so hard that the, that the windows were shaking in his, I think, Upper West Side New York apartment. He's 94, right? He's losing his memory to Alzheimer's. He's been dealing with Alzheimer's since he's been diagnosed for four years. So he's on the decline. He still has that. 
So no matter what happens to him, he will always be a singer. No matter what happens to Ella Fitzgerald, you know, when she was living, she will always be that beautiful jazz singstress that she's always been. No matter what happens to me, I will always be a communicator. I haven't done heavy, hardcore journalism in years. I have two degrees in journalism. I will always be a communicator though, always. You can strip away everything and it's still me. That's what you need to feel when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. What, um, what uh, Gay Hendricks in his excellent book, The, the Big Leap, if you've, if you've attended any, any of these other conversations, you heard me talk about them quite a bit. But his book, The Big Leap, he talks about your zone of genius. What can you do that no one else can do better? What are you uniquely suited to do? Or as uh, Scott Dismore says, as I, um, I think that's the opener to my book, uh, The Ultimate Bite Size Entrepreneur, which came out a few years ago. I think it's the opening quote in here, if I remember correctly. What is that one thing that you cannot not do? You see this with Tony Bennett. He's in his 90s. He's frankly dying and he can't help but sing. So number one, whatever you're passionate about, whatever your thing is, a good test is to strip everything away. That's why it's so important when you have those moments where you're not making money at your craft. When you have those moments where no one knows who the hell you are. Those moments when your not, name is not in lights. Because in those moments, and I've been in all those moments, in every, if you look at my LinkedIn, every single profession I've had, I've had a year or two or a decade where I've been in the shadows. And that part is so important because you realize why you're really doing it. Because if you're doing it for the fame or the acclaim or the money or whatever, that's gonna go up and down, as they talk about in the piece about Tony Bennett, right? So if you have that period of time when you're not getting those outside validations, then you understand if that's your true identity or not. All right, so number one, if, if to understand if it's really your thing, will you still be that if everything is stripped away, right? A lot of us have experienced that recently with the pandemic. So that's number one. Number two is to do your thing so much that it becomes routine. And by it becoming routine, it becomes spectacular, it becomes mastery, it becomes strength. I'm thinking a lot lately, um, particularly after I read the, the piece about, um, excuse me, about Tony Bennett, is about um, Joe Jackson, who of course is the patriarch to Michael Jackson and Jan Jackson, <laughs> I think it's like 10 Jacksons, the whole Jackson family. Might have been Reby too, but I think Reby was a cousin. Anyway, I digress. And they had this, this drop of a hat method him as well as his wife, Catherine, at this drop of a hat method, which I use, which means that you could be at the barbershop, you could be at a picnic, you could be just finished going to the bathroom. And as soon as that beat plays, as soon as that stage lights up, as soon as it says, okay, it's showtime, you're ready to, to rock at the drop of a hat or a drop of a dime, if you want to use the old school expression of that. You see that in, again, this piece with Tony Bennett, he's ready to play. But that's because he's had this beautiful routine. His voice just still robust. He's 94. And but it's so robust because of that practice, that routine. I did a um, a, a, um, a video recently about how successful entrepreneurs and creatives love routines. I'll throw a link up here. Hopefully, I can throw it right there where my my hand is. <laughs> still learning this 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 format. But what I talk about in that is Steve Jobs and. Um, in the greater piece that I have for Inc. Magazine over at Inc. DamonBrown.com, you can read the original column where this, is, where this was inspired. Um, I talk about even Richard Branson and Bill Gates and all these people who are considered landmark people of our times and very rich people of our times too. They all, even Warren Buffett, they all thrive on routine. You see this formula um, with the greats and even more humbly with someone like me. If someone were to call me right now and say, hey Damon, um, sheltering in place is suddenly up. We need to have you in uh, Buffalo, New York, New York right now. I'm on the concert circuit for some reason. I've never spoken in Buffalo. <laughs> we need to have you in Buffalo, New York right now. And you need to fly in tomorrow night, bring a bunch of your books and you need to do your latest keynote. I could do that. I could practice it a couple times to get the cobwebs out and then I'm ready to go. Because when I do a keynote, I do practice it over and over and over again. One of the biggest flaws that um, as a um, business coach, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I also work with Hero Public Speaking and other organizations to help other people with their speeches and with their talks. 
I'm also a business coach, but like I said, I also do keynotes and I also help other people with doing keynotes. And the biggest challenge in flow I see is that people want to improvise because they feel as though if they practice too much, it's going to lose the magic. It's actually quite the opposite. You want to practice something until you're sick of it. You want to practice something until, again, you can do it at a drop of a dime or like Ella Fitzgerald, you can literally do it in your sleep. She was a definition of that. I can do my keynotes almost in my sleep. That's not to show off on me. And I'm just trying to say that that routine is embedded. I've done each of my keynotes hundreds of times. Most of the time, not for our audience. It's usually me in my garage or me doing it with a couple trusted advisors. That's it. But I keep repeating it and repeating it to the point where I can say it just like that. Even me talking to the camera with you right now, that's from hundreds and hundreds of times of doing it. And any awkwardness I have, it will continue to go away as I come to you day after day after day through this channel and through other means. So number one, if you're going to look at this Tony Bennett story, which um, it is a sad story, but there's some lessons to learn from this man. The first thing is to understand that, excuse me, is to understand that you should be who you are. If you're truly in your zone of genius, to quote Gay Hendricks, no matter how much is stripped from you. Again, with respect to Tony Bennett, he's literally losing his mind but you drop on the beginning of Fly Me to the Moon and he's standing up and he's crooning like he was 27 or 28 again. I'm not doing keynotes on the road, but if someone calls me, it's like, hey, we need a keynote right now. I can do it at drop of a hat, drop of a dime, whatever. And bestsellers, money, accolades, newspaper headlines, all those don't mean anything. So if you're in the space where you're feeling uncomfortable and you're not sure if you should go on and you feel like you need the accolades or the money, then maybe you should question if this is really where you're supposed to be. Because wherever you're supposed to be, it should be there before the money comes and you should be there after the money goes away. So number one, whomever you're going to be, how you're going to serve a world, it should be there no matter what gets stripped away from you. Number one, excuse me. And then number two, Understand that routine creates mastery. It creates mastery. The masters do not wing it. It just looks like they're winging it. <laughs> if you read the article about Tony Bennett, you can tell he was a perfectionist. Maybe not in the same way that, <laughs> that I bemoan perfectionist as I did in one of my TED Talks, but perfectionist as in trying to get to a higher level. And that's all I have to say about that. This actually has me emotional because I love Tony Bennett and I want to make sure I got on here and shared some of those gems from him. If you want to get more resources and insights, please come over to buildfromnowquiz.com. It's buildfromnowquiz.com. It's based on my new book, Now Out, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. This free quiz, it'll just take two minutes. It's like three or four multiple choice questions and it'll give you the best resources based on the four for resource framework that I talk about in the book. Again, it's free. If you want to grab the book, grab it on any outlet. You can also get it at DamonBrown.net if you want a signed copy. And remember that you can always bring your worth and that you can always build from now. Take care.